welcome everybody today. Thank you for joining um, our foods webinar. Um, I'm just going to go over a few things first and then dive into the Midwest Labs website, our MyLab portal, and then our foods team will go over um, an oxidation lab brief that we've created and testing packages, as well as answer some Q&A for you if you have any at the end here. So a little bit about myself. My name is Megan Fonfera. I am the onboarding and marketing specialist here at Midwest Labs. I've been a member of the team for over six years now. Day-to-day um, -day job is assisting our new clients navigating the steps to get started with our lab. And I train new and existing clients on navigating the website and our MyLab portal platform. And then of course we do these monthly portal webinars towards the end of the month. And then this year we've been doing some additional industry specific webinars as well, like today. I also help to create educational training material for all the industries for our internal employees and clients like you. So today we have Brian Hodges and Kaylee Parr from our foods team. Ryan is the food laboratory supervisor, and he has been with the team for over 10 years now. Kaylee Parr, the food and ingredient account manager, has been with the team for over five years. They work with the food ingredient clients to ensure the testing process goes smoothly and assist with questions on account setup, sample submission, proper testing packages, and then results. And then they are our subject matter experts in food and ingredient testing, specifically nutritional labeling, environmental testing, and allergens. So a little bit about Midwest Labs. Our mission here is to drive a positive impact on the lives of our employees, clients, and communities. We've been driving smart decisions since 1975, and we continue to do so by recruiting individuals in the fields of chemistry, biochemistry, microbiology, animal science, agronomy, agricultural science, and environmental science. So we have over four decades of experience and analytical needs for our clients, as I told you. And then here's a little campus map. Um, we are ISO and NELAP accredited. We operate a 14 building campus here in Omaha, Nebraska. So there's what our campus looks like. And then we have our main office for those of you that send carriers or are local to us that drop off your samples to the front desk there. And then here's just kind of a timeline um, of our different labs within our operation, providing analysis for soil, plants, pet food, animal feed, food and beverage, compost, fertilizer, fuel, and environmental samples. So just showing when we first opened our soils lab back in 1975, feeds and metals, followed by chromatography, our microbiology lab, wet chemistry, and then later foods and fuel. So I mentioned our analytical capabilities there on the left. Um, we do also have additional service offerings that a lot of people kind of don't know about. Um, we do method development. So we have verification and validation studies. We have a quality control team. Uh, we have sampling supplies. We have our own environmental sampling team that goes out locally to uh, different clients to do on-site sampling. We have local career services and API integration and support. So that's just uh, integrating your system with our system for purposes of submitting sample paperwork and then when results are reported out. We have our account management portal, the MyLab, which is what we're kind of touching on today, and then our customer success team. So if you have any questions, you can always contact us at our, our customer service number. So for today's agenda, um, I'm gonna provide you with a quick tour of a couple key things on the Midwest Labs website and then jump over to our MyLab portal. So this is gonna be how to submit proper paperwork, order supplies, view your test results, and then pay your monthly invoices. And then from there, our foods team, um, Brian and Kaylee will go over the oxidation lab brief that we've prepared and the oxidation testing packages. And then of course, we'll answer any questions you may have. So we'll get started. Um, I recommend bookmarking midwestlabs.com and the portal, which is mylab.midwestlabs.com. So we'll start here on the midwestlabs.com homepage. I direct people usually to the Get Started tab. 
this is broken out here on the left with the steps to do business with us from picking your testing packages, completing a submittal form, how to mail in samples, view results, and then create your account. Um, and then we also have landing pages here to the right broken out by industry. So for this group, we have our food and ingredients page. So you'll just click on food and ingredient. And then that's going to jump to our main page here that has some of our recommended packages. And then you can also get to our full analytical catalog. And then usually on the right here, we have some supplemental documentation that we have available to foods clients. So a nutrition label form, food sampling, food allergen, GMO, brewer sample form, et cetera. And then an FAQ document swab instructions, things like that. So it's kind of a nice resource I just like to show you on the website. You can click on the MyLab portal tab here to the top right, or you can just, of course, bookmark it. If you haven't created an account on that homepage uh, on mylab.midwestlabs.com, there'll be a button that says create account. It will ask for your information and then get you registered. So once you get logged in, you'll see your user dashboard. This is kind of what it'll look like as you log in. If we have any special announcements here, new pricing or new packages or methods, usually there'll be a link to those here at the top. This is kind of just a snapshot of your account. So notifications, some FAQs, how many accounts and users you have, and I will show you how to add users later, your running balance, and then your recent analysis orders. So available analysis, I showed you this on the website, but you, you can also click here on that tab and it's gonna jump back over to the website so that you can browse the full catalog of pricing. Just wanted to show you though, the catalog is broken out in the table of contents by industry. So as you can see here, you'll see the food and ingredients section, and then it will tell you what page the testing is on. If you hover over a page number, it will then go to uh, directly to that page. So if I just click that page, it's going to take me to, and you can zoom in and out. Sorry, I didn't mean to zoom in that far food and ingredient testing packages. You can also download this. And if you don't see anything or you need custom test packages, which we will talk about today, uh, contact the foods team. Your account manager will get those set up in your account so that those reflect in your portal. So then once you know what you're testing, you're going to create your paperwork. So you're going to click on submit samples. And today we're just using one of our foods accounts. So you'll come down here to select category right under sample type, and you're going to choose food and ingredients. And then we're going to do a couple different examples today. So the first one at the top, you'll select food product. As you can see here, there's lots of different options here, but you can select just food product if you don't see your item in the list. And then you'll notice red boxes pop up. These are the required fields to fill out. So your description box is just a description of what your samples are. And this is also going to reflect as your report header. And then you'll have a product category. So this is where we have a lot of different things listed for you to select from. Again, if you don't see what you're looking for there, let your account manager know and we can get things added as well in here. But for today, I'll just pick a product here. And then if you have a PO number, you would put it here, but that is not required. Comment is not required unless you have some additional notes you'd like us to know. And then for foods, we don't require safety data sheets. So just leave that to default as does not require a safety data sheet. And then you'll scroll down here. Your sample ID is however you've labeled each uh, bag or sample of food. So I'm for today, I'm just going to put in one. I've labeled my bag of sample one. And then you'll notice you can click on the test box. So from here, 
Um, you'll notice a couple custom packages that Kaylee created for us, Peroxide Value and TBA. The standard packages will be under standard packages down below. But again, if there's something you need um, in that sample type, let us know and we can create those custom packages. So those will reflect at the top here. So I'm just going to click Peroxide Value and show you that you can click on the I next to peroxide value and it's going to show you in your account, it will show you the price and what, what is included and the method. You can add multiple tests as well. They'll just drop down below the test box. Um, for date sample, not required, but I recommend just clicking on the calendar and then selecting the date. So it'll populate for you in the right format. And then if you are doing time, which is not required either, you do military time, no colon. So you'll see there it says 24 hour time example, 1530. So if you try typing in a time with a colon, it's gonna give you that red box and that exclamation point to let you know that's incorrectly formatted. So we'll leave that blank. I just wanted to note that. And then over here, you'll see expected levels. Um, if you are a, a client that has expected levels, you can enter those here, but those are not required. That's also a comment box if needed. You can click the plus sign here and then put in your additional samples. So I have three other samples. I'm just gonna hit click OK. If you've put in a number like one or a letter like A, it's going to sequentially fill those in down below for you as a sample ID. And you'll notice it did also populate the tests. If it does not do that, you can click the little arrow to the right of each box. And that's gonna just say, click to use these tests for the samples below. So that's just kind of a nice thing. If you have a lot of samples, um, you can use those to just push everything down through. And then of course you can make any edits to any samples or remove a test. Or maybe you want to remove a, a sample here. Just check the box and click Remove Selected. Once your fields are all filled out, you'll click Review Order. This is going to give you a summary. And again, for your accounts, it will show you the pricing breakdown and your total that will be due the following month. So we invoice the month after testing is completed. And then you'll click Submit Order. So this is gonna give you the actual submittal form with the QR code in the top right. This is the document that you actually print off and put in the box with your samples. So you'll see our logo and the address right here where you ship the box to. So then you'll print that out and put that in the box with your samples. Anytime you click Submit, the submittal forms are all stored under view documents. So if you don't print or need to come back later, you can always go to view documents. And that's just kind of where all your submittals are housed. So you can just click on order form. I'm gonna go back to submit samples page and do one more example. So again, we're gonna choose food and ingredients. And then this time we're gonna choose oil and fat. So this one um, has just the description. So this is just our um, report header again. Same format, sample ID. And then because I selected a different uh, sample type or matrix, you will notice the standard packages changed for what is available on an oil and a fat sample, as well as the custom packages that Kaylee created as well. So we got free fatty acids here and peroxide value. So I'm going to select free fatty acids and that's going to populate below. Again, you can always click on that to see what's included and the price. You can click add sample to add samples individually or do the copy sample. I'm just going to do my little arrows to the right. And then I'm going to click review order. Make sure everything looks right. If you need to make edits, you can always click back to order. And then when you're ready, click submit. And then there's your new submittal form. One thing I wanted to show you, because I get this question a lot, is I made a mistake on my submittal form. What do I do? Um, 
there's a little trick here. Uh, I know we're trying to enhance the portal this next year, but for now, if you go back to your user dashboard and you scroll down right under recent analysis orders, you'll see those ones I just showed you. So A and B and one, two, and three. These two overlapping squares here, if you click on them or hover, you'll notice it says copy to begin a new order. I'm gonna click on those for the one I wanna edit and it's gonna take me right back to that submit samples page. So I go in here, make my edits, whatever, whatever those may be, click review order again, and then click submit. So then this will be the new submittal form with the edits that you'll print off and put in the box with your samples and then just discard the other one. It will all be under view documents, but disregard. We only scan in and charge what is actually in the box with your samples. You can also order supplies on the portal. There's a few items listed here. Um, if you need anything that's not listed here, contact your account manager. It's just like a regular shopping cart though. Um, you would just add your quantities and then update to the right, click view cart, and then just kind of go through the prompts, clicking next, making sure your address is right, clicking next. and then it'll have you confirm your address. So check the little box next to it and then hit submit. You'll get a confirmation in green and your order will go to our shipping department and get sent out. Okay, so when your tests are completed, you will get an email of the completed report and then you can also come down here to view reports. You can filter by date, so just pulling back a date range on that tab. So we'll email you a PDF of the report as well. All right, so here's how the dashboard will look. It'll have your account number, the date that it's reported out, the report number, which starts with a two digit number based on the year. Um, I just wanted to show you quickly that you can go over here and view a PDF of your report. Um, you can also search by any of these drop down fields to find what you're looking for. Um, and you can also redo this dashboard here as to what shows. So if you click column settings, whatever's listed in line one is going to reflect there. So if I don't need info two, I can move it to line two and hit save. And then it kind of cleans up my dashboard. So that's just kind of something to know. You can also select reports and either email them to someone. Um, yours will not have a soil report format because it'll be a foods account, but send that through email or you can download uh, end of year or mid year reports. Some people like to do just select all the reports and then click export data. And then this is where you can create a spreadsheet or CSV. And then this just saves to your desktop. Um, okay, you can also create a printable shipping label here through the portal. You'll click on shipping labels and then you'll have UPS, FedEx, and then depending on your zip code, you'll have Speedy. Um, for today, I'm just gonna select UPS and then you'll do the zero to 10, 10 to 20 etc and the price will change if you have any questions on that there's a little guy down here you can click on that kind of tells you how many samples fit in each size but if you have any questions let us know this just kind of gives you a you know approximately six samples fit in that is there uh, less than 10 10 to 20 fits about 12 samples etc you don't have to use our shipping labels. You can just take it to the carrier of your choice, but obviously it's nice a nice feature if you need them. Um, you'll just kind of follow the prompts just like you did the order supplies page and click next, confirm your address, and then you'll just click print label. This is gonna populate just like your submittal form. And then you can make as many as you want. We only charge you for what is actually received and we scan in in our receiving uh, department, just like the submittal form. So keep that in mind. You can also schedule a pickup. 
through here with FedEx or Speedy, depending on your area. So I just uh, tell people to follow the prompts there to select the address and then schedule the pickup. And then there's the number to call to just kind of double check and make sure everything's received on their end. Um, your account management tab is where you're going to add users to your account. So it will list your current users and their permissions. You'll scroll to the bottom. And then you're going to add the user by email address. and then click add user. After you do so, you will have to select their permissions. So full admin gives them access to everything I'm showing you today. Order tests would give them the submit samples capability to create paperwork. View reports, obviously just viewing and downloading reports, ordering supplies, or just if you are accounts receivable and you need to pay the bills, you can go to just check billing. If you select account admin, it'll default to checking all the boxes and then click save changes. Once you do so, tell this user to check their email. They'll get a registration email that they'll have to walk through the prompts to finish uh, setting up their user details and then their own password. Um, as the admin on the account, you will be able to approve additional users or you can come in here and make changes at any time. So if someone leaves, you can uncheck their permissions and also click save changes. Um, after that, uh, like I said before, the the following month you will get your invoice and since this account doesn't have an invoice i'm going to show you on my powerpoint here you would click on that view invoices tab and then you're going to see what is due and when it's due and the amount so you'll have two options to view the invoice itemized out or to just click pay once you click that pay invoice button it's going to take you to a screen to type in your credit card number Security code zip, expiration, check a couple of boxes, and then click process order. You will get a notification of you know, payment confirmed or denied for whatever reason. You can always contact us to pay over the phone um, if you need any assistance there as well. So that's just kind of a basic overview of how to use the MyLab portal. Um, now I'm going to have Kaylee and Brian go over their lab brief on food oxidation indicators. So whenever you guys are ready. Hi, my name is Kaylee Parr. Um, and from the lab brief, um, over time, food products will begin to deteriorate or oxidize. Oxidation is a chain reaction that occurs in the presence of oxygen and is responsible for the deterioration of fats in food products, which can cause off flavors and rancid odors. This process is affected by several things like processing, packaging, storing techniques, as well as product ingredients. Um, oxidation can be a measurement of product quality, particularly in products with high fat or oil content. One critical aspect of this process is to monitor the degradation processes using a variety of analyses, which can include iodine number, free fatty acids, peroxide value, pianistidine value, and thiobarbituric acid or TBA. The two significant chemical classes that undergo oxidation are lipids and fats and proteins. Uh, they do deteriorate differently. Proteins generally degrade to form biogenic amines while fats and lipids deteriorate and form volatile organic acids and aldehydes. And this is focusing particularly on the degradation of lipids and fats. Wonderful. Hello, I'm Brian Hodges. I'm gonna piggyback off of the de degradation of lipid and fats and just start with two initial screening methods that would include iodine value and free fatty acids. <clears throat> First, iodine value is used to measure the number of double bonded carbon or unsaturated molecules. As it turns out, these bonds are the locations where several degradation processes can occur. The greater number of unsaturated molecules, the higher the iodine value and the greater potential of deterioration. Free fatty acids, on the other hand, is an analysis that is titrometric measurement of the number of carbonyl groups that form when trigly triglycerides, excuse me, break down to form glycerol and fatty acids. 
The breakdown of triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol is the initial step of further degradation processes. Moving on to kind of talk about peroxide. Now, peroxide value is one of our most popular and requested tests, and it's used to measure fat and lipid deterioration on fat that is extracted from your sample. Through a process of auto-oxidation, the double-bonded fatty acids form peroxides. As more double-bonded fatty acids undergo oxidation, the peroxide value will increase. Interestingly, once the double bonded molecules have reacted, the peroxide value will kind of level off and begin to decrease, resembling that of a bell curve, if you will. Another test would be pianestidine. This is used to measure the breakdown of products that are formed during that auto oxidation and peroxide formation steps. It is recommended that both the peroxide value and anestidine tests are run on the same sample where the peroxide value would indicate the increase of oxidation, while anestidine would monitor the byproducts of that oxidation. And then finally, the TBA test also measures byproducts of oxidation, typically aldehydes. Um, this test is nonspecific and can be used on a variety of matrices and products. In contrast to all the other tests mentioned, a considerable benefit to TBA is that the analysis is run directly on the product itself, not on extracted fat. Overall, rancidity testing is important to measure as it ensures product quality and safety. The results can be used as a current state snapshot of product or as a tool to measure changes over time. So if you guys have any questions over um, this lab brief, we will be posting it to the resources tab on the website, and then you can always contact our foods team to kind of go over this. So I'm gonna show you real quick on the website, there's a resources tab. There is our video library, which is where we will post this uh, webinar when it is ready. And then all of our other webinars are posted there. So any uh, client specific or industry specific, as well as just my monthly MyLab portal training. Uh, we have a good shelf life overview, which is part of the foods team. And Jordan Sebez does a wonderful job there. Um, and then you have a product and sampling guides tab. So this uh, lab brief that was created by Brian and Kaylee will be posted here as well. You can search by industries um, as well here. So that's kind of nice. And then you'll know what there's the food oxidation indicators lab brief. So you can always download that. And then I wanted to quickly bring up um, for Brian and Kaylee, the oxidation testing, if you guys want to go over that as well, since you just reviewed that process. Sure thing. So this is a screenshot from our fee schedule with um, some of the oxidation indicator tests that we offer. As mentioned, um, free fatty acids, iodine value, peroxide value. Um, none of these tests are available under standard packages, but we can create custom projects for you to be able to select. Just reach out and um, we can make that available for you to select on the portal. Awesome. Thanks, Brian and Kaylee. So we have a few questions for you guys. Um, the first one, is there a single catch all test for oxidation that I can request? That is a good question. Unfortunately, that answer is no. Um, you know, we have a variety of tests that we kind of discussed there. We have many options when it comes to those tests, but you know, really it's based on your product, the amount of fat that's in your product. Um, you know, unfortunately there just is no one size fits all here. Yeah. So for those, obviously contact us and get in touch with your account manager and we can kind of gauge what you're needing. And then as Kaylee said, set up custom packages that include multiple tests here from, from the food and ingredients section. Um, another one to Brian and Kaylee, is there a way to measure how my product is changing over time? Yes, there is. So a great way to do that is doing a shelf life study on your product. We have a shelf life program manager, Jordan Sebez, who can work with you to really tailor the study to exactly what you want to see over time, whether that's micro testing, oxidation testing. Um, overall, you want 
the product to be the same experience throughout the entire time that a customer or consumer could be trying it. So a great way to see how it changes is through the shelf life. Awesome. And then the screen you'll see up here, folks, is the foods team, uh, distro list at the top. And then, of course, Brian, Kaylee, myself, and then Jordan Sabez, our shelf life coordinator. So feel free to reach out via email or, or phone. Um, and then one more question here. Uh, can multiple tests be run on the same sample, given the sample size is large enough? Absolutely. Absolutely, that's a great question actually. Absolutely it can be. Uh, we actually recommend that you run uh, peroxide and anestadine uh, at the same time, just to give you kind of an indication of how oxidized your product is currently, and then the susceptibility of de degradation moving forward. Um, also depends on the amount of fat in your product. Uh, if you have a low fat product, TBA is gonna be your only option. But if there is a decent amount of fat that we can extract from your sample, we are able to run the full battery of tests, which tell you a little something different with, with each test that we have there. So there are options. Just uh, call Kaylee to discuss the best move there to make, and we can certainly accommodate. Awesome. Um, other questions here. How do we know a product has gone bad? So is it a color or a benchmark thing? How do we know? So, I mean, it really, really depends on what your product is and what your own like quality and safety metrics are for that specific product. Um, it's not really something that we can determine. It's something that we can work with you to see how it changes over time. Um, so unfortunately, there is some resources online that might be able to give you some sort of indication, but it is very specific to your actual matrix. Awesome. Thanks, Kaylee. Um, and depending on the oxidation result of my product, could a specific type of packaging be recommended by you guys? You know, man, another good question there. Unfortunately, we... We don't really provide that guidance. I don't, uh, we don't have a, someone specialized in a type of packaging that would help. We have packaging tests to tell if your packaging is sound enough and not letting in oxygen, which would further degrade your product. But unfortunately, we don't have that knowledge base to, to recommend some sort of packaging. Awesome, okay. Thank you guys for your knowledge today and answering those questions. Great questions from the group. Um, if you guys need any specific uh, questions answered, again, here is everyone to reach out to. Um, I will also do just the MyLab portal trainings once a month as well. Um, and then again, industry specific. So we will continue to do these by industry. Um, and then you can also find the recordings on our YouTube page. Um, just wanted to say thank you to everybody for joining today. You can reach out to me. I can do one-on-one -on -one trainings. And then, of course, our awesome account managers like Kaylee will help set up custom packages and kind of customize your experience on the portal. And then Jordan Sabez can get you set up with shelf life testing. So thank you today to Brian Hodges and Kaylee Parr for their expertise and everybody for joining today. And have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys.